Hi, I'm Bobby C. In this video today, I have some good news and bad news. First, the bad news. I lost my red Italian sports car, my little Fiat 500 that I was towing behind my motorhome. A little accident. I came out okay, the car not so much. That's the bad news. The good news is I found another Fiat 500 and it's uh, it's nice. So the good news is I'm going to set this one up to flat tow and I'm gonna show you how I did it. Stay tuned. Okay, it's a rainy day out here today and I'm just waiting for my order from eTrailer.com so I can uh, set up my 2012 Fiat 500 for flat towing behind my motorhome and so I thought we'd take an opportunity to talk about you know why I'm doing this I guess I've I if you haven't seen uh, the video that I made on flat towing a Fiat 500 uh, it's with my my old red Italian sports car uh, take a look at that and it'll give you a sort of an overview of why you might want to flat tow and some of the options there but for us, I found that flat towing is really uh, the best option for us. And so once you get to that point, you need to decide uh, what car. Uh, so let's talk about that for a second. <clears throat> so, you know, as I thought about it more, I, you know, let's, let's try to find another Fiat 500. I've already done it. It's very easy. Let's see what I can find. So um, I was lucky. You know, I started to look and... Actually, on Memorial Day weekend, I, I found uh, Milli Vanilli, the, the white uh, Fiat that I, that I bought. So, again, right now I'm just waiting to get the parts from uh, eTrailer.com. So, let's talk about eTrailer.com for a minute. Um, uh, you know, it's really a helpful website. Uh, you can plug in your vehicle and it will give you, you know, what parts uh, would fit it for different applications whether it's towing whether it's you know to be flat towed uh, for trailer hitches you know wiring kits things of that nature so uh, it's real helpful and the customer service is great if you have questions I already knew what I needed so um, I decided to just go ahead and order those and, and that's what I did so let's talk about what I ordered now so if you decide you're gonna to flat tow, there are two main players in the market. Um, one is Roadmaster and one is Blue Ox. Um, E-Trailer carries both of those, both work very well. Uh, I prefer the um, Blue Ox setup because I believe it's a much cleaner setup um, when you, you have less to remove when you're at your campground. Uh, it's, a, it's a very quick setup. So to me, uh, it, it works better. Um, but you can research them both and decide, you know, which might work best for you. So, um, since I went with the Blue Ox, as you plug in your, your vehicle into e-trailer, it gives you all of the different components that you're going to need for your setup. Uh, and that's, that's what I did. So, for mine, uh, my 2012 Fiat 500, and these can vary based upon, you know, the year of the Fiat and, um, um, the model of the Fiat, so you can have uh, an Abarth, which is a high-performance model. I have the Pop, you can have the Sport model, and each are a little bit different. And so what I ordered uh, for my particular vehicle is uh, a Blue Ox base plate. So the base plate is what attaches to your frame that you, you then attach your, your, your tow bar and different components to. So I ordered the BX2801 uh, base plate kit. And I also ordered a uh, special um, bulb and socket wiring kit from, it's a Blue Ox manufactured. It is BX8869. You have to plug in the model of that one because they've now converted to uh, LED models of this, LED bulbs, and I, I did not want that. So. Uh, the this particular tail light wiring kit allows you to um, just connect to your trailer wiring and run your 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 turn signals your brake lights your parking lights 
strictly from the connection to your RV. So there's no need to um, turn on the RV, turn the key on, um, no need to tap into your, your vehicle's uh, wiring system. So that kit is, is pretty nice. Uh, uh, it, it works well in the Fiat and could be used in other applications as well. I, I did not look for a displacing into my uh, vehicle's wiring, so it makes it a lot easier too. And then I ordered a, that that by the way is BX8869, so that's the Blue Ox tail light wiring kit, bulb and socket. I also got a, a front end, um, uh, a vehicle connector that is uh, the model number is 294-0805. It is a four-wire plug for Blue Ox coiled electrical cord vehicle end. So basically, uh, your your one end is a seven-pin connector that goes into your RV, and on the other end is a round uh, four four-wire plug connector. So um, I already had the the coiled wiring. Uh, kit that goes from the RV to your tow car so I didn't have to order that again but that that can be found on e-trailer also and in addition to that I just ordered some Loctite because when you're putting the base plate on they do recommend that you use Loctite which is uh, sort of a, a thread uh, uh, sail and it prevents your bolts from vibrating and loosening on your base plate, so you want this to be a permanent installation. The uh, total cost for all of these items that I, I ordered from um, from me trailer was five hundred seventy-two dollars and thirty-six cents. And this is again more Memorial Day weekend, twenty twenty-one. So um, you know, if you're gonna get a setup done professionally by others, you, you're looking at you know, four four thousand bucks would be a ballpark of what it might cost you to have it done elsewhere. Now, the one thing that I don't get from my Fiat because it only weighs twenty three hundred pounds is I do not get a supplemental braking system kit. Um, so there's a number of those. If your vehicle weighs typically more than twenty five hundred pounds, you're probably going to need that. Um, I I I didn't get that because in the roads that I travel and normally where I go. If you're you're good to up to 2,500 pounds without the supplemental braking system, and I've used it, I've gone you know to Florida uh, a couple different times, and I've had you know no issues uh, you know with controlling the vehicle back there. I even had a panic stop or two, so as you might find. So it works for me. Um, um, you can add that later if you feel you need to, uh, but I you know I did not get that. So. You know, again, total cost, you know, five, almost, you know, 575 bucks. That's pretty, pretty cheap. So if you can do it yourself, uh, it's great. Uh, you don't have to be a master mechanic. I'm not. Okay. So, but I think just about anyone can do it with some minor tools. I'll show you that when we get into doing the actual installation. Of course, the other thing you're going to need, if you don't already have it, I already have mine from the install before, is a tow bar. And um, I got a Blue Ox tow bar also with that. Uh, the one that I got is the Alpha model tow bar. Uh, it can handle weights up to, you know, the 2,500 pounds or, or less than my, than my car is. Um, but you're going to need that as well. And that's going to run you another six, $700. So again, total, you know, 1200 bucks somewhere in that neighborhood you can get set up towing this particular car for flat towing so twelve hundred dollars or so would probably do it okay it's fourth of july weekend i ordered my parts from each trailer on memorial day weekend so sad story they let me down this time i called several times to each trailer to find out what's going on and the answer was, we can't hire people. Hmm, 2021 thing. So, um, I looked up the parts on Amazon. I was able to get everything on Amazon. So everything started to come in. Uh, we got the uh, bulb and socket wiring kit in. This is the Blue Ox BX8869. 
wiring kit. It has a an incandescent bulb that you actually mount inside your tail light lens, and then a wiring kit that runs up to the front of the vehicle. Um, I'm going to run it up through the inside and through the firewall because I have an access point to do that. I'll show you where that is. Um, and then you have a connector that goes on the front, which is this. It's a Hopkins trailer connector. It's a four inch round connector. So you take your seven inch round <coughs> from the RV and I have a coiled wire connector that goes into a four inch round like this. This is a kit with the male and female. I actually only need uh, the female, which is gonna mount on my base plate. And so I'll be able to make that uh, connection from the RV to the Fiat and we'll be ready to go. So let's get started finally. Okay, we're gonna remove the, uh, the tail lights from the Fiat and uh, that's pretty easy. There are two 10 millimeter uh, screws that need to be re removed. Um, you pull it out after removing the screws and then there's gonna be two clips on the back of this uh, tail light assembly that you undo and you've got the tail light out. Pretty simple. So here we go. So, and there's actually only one clip, which is right here, and there is a release under here. Um, I'm going to get a flat bladed screwdriver because that will help to uh, open this catch and release it. So, hold on. All right, let's, uh, using the screwdriver, get under here. And there it is. Here's the tail light assembly. And we're gonna take a number 10 Torx uh, bit and remove these four screws from the tail light assembly. Okay, now with the screws removed, I'm just gonna remove this piece here. These are your bulbs. And we're gonna be adding a bulb. Actually, it's gonna fit in right about here, I believe. So, um, we'll have to check it. While you have these out, I've already done these, but it's a good idea to get some diurelectic grease and put them on all the fittings. You know, this there is a seal here, um, but you know, this area can get wet and these bulbs can corrode. So, you know, make sure you do that. All right, and just to be clear, we're going to be going right in here. Um, so if you orient, it, orient this tail light assembly to the, di to the picture there, it shows that uh, we'll be going right into here. So into this large area, uh, you'll have room for another bulb. The bulbs uh, in these, if you should need to replace one, is a 2357, pretty common bulb. So 2357 would be a replacement bulb if needed. Okay, you'll need to drill a small hole here. So uh, this would be for the wires from your bulb kit that you're adding to leave the tail light assembly. And so you can hook them up. Uh, you just want it to be just large enough to fit three wires through these three wires. You'll you'll see when you go to drill the hole. Great position for it on both assemblies. So right here. Okay, once you drill the tail light out with the one inch hole saw, that's that's where it's going to be. So if you look at it in relation to the other holes, and of course in the paper that I sent, uh, it's going to be right there. So this is going to go my, right in here. And you can silicone that in and uh, you try to get it as flat as possible but that's not always possible that's the best spot for this one so you're gonna use a lot of silicone around there I did that on mine it worked fine
We had to wait overnight uh, to let the silicone dry that I put around the bulb sockets that I installed in the uh, Kellite assembly. So um, had to take a little break. It also was 4th of July, so I had to celebrate a little bit. But now um, here is the completed um, bulb assembly. Uh, not the neatest thing, but again, not completely flat. So I had to make sure it was adequately siliconed uh, around the bulb. So ready now to uh, figure out how to run the wires up uh, through, make the connection to the tail light and run the wires up through uh, the inside of the car, which is what I chose to do. So we'll take a look at that in a minute. This is the loom of wire that is going to run up through the inside of the car. Now the white is a ground and the brown is your tail lights and then the yellow and green are for your left and left and right turn signal and brake lights so the yellow is going to be for the driver side and the green is going to be for the passenger side so on your uh, driver side tail light you're going to on both of these actually there's a tapping screw and a terminal you're going to um, uh, attach your, your white to the car with a self-tapping screw. You're also going to attach a white from the loom that's going to run up through the car to this one on the driver's side. And the brown is going to go from side to side for your uh, tail lights. And then the black on this one on the driver's side is going to connect to uh, the yellow wire and on the passenger side the black is going to connect to the green wire instructions are pretty well laid out so you don't have to remember that okay we were able to get access by pulling out a uh, plastic pin that was inside and we used a tool like this to remove it and uh, that gave us access to the back and also underneath we removed the sill cover here and we're able to get access to run the wires from one side to the other because you're going to run these the green and the brown from um, this tail light over to the other tail light uh, where you'll have the actually to the loom connection there so uh, we're good to go here we got access coming through going under this little seal here so i think we're we're good we're going to be, still be watertight there so and here's where we drilled the hole uh just below the where the terminal plug comes in and it was just large enough for our three wires to come through should really be watertight okay we're ready to put the lens back in place now once we attach the uh, terminal again um, now just a note uh, in placing the self-tapping screw I did it up here you don't really have a whole lot of room to work with uh, when you attach it to manipulate the tail light assembly so now I got everything connected just need to connect this and we're gonna put it back in place well we're back and uh, been taking a break throughout this because of uh, a lot of heat and uh, no rush really. I'm still waiting for my base plate. That should be coming in about a week. So that will hopefully allow me to finish the job. So I've been working on the wiring here. Uh, we're almost there. So what we're gonna do today is I'm going to um, show you how to access uh, the firewall. We have the wire loom run up through the front. It's all concealed. Um, and so we're, we're near the uh, accelerator, which is where we need to be to go through the firewall. Um, have to remove the accelerator pedal. I'm gonna show you that, uh, how to do that exactly, and how to access the hidden port in the Fiat 500. Um, in case uh, it doesn't show great, I do have uh, a video that I'll be linking at the bottom that I used, which it gives a great view on how to do this. So, um, and I'll show the time where that picks up because it's part of a longer video. Anyhow, time to get started today. 
Okay, we're underneath uh, the accelerator pedal now. If you follow the accelerator pedal to the top, you'll see there's a red tab. That's, um, that's an electrical connection. To release that, uh, you pull it, the red tab straight out towards you, and uh, then you can um, take the terminal off. Once you have that off, there are three screws that require a 10 millimeter uh, socket deep socket and I have that and I'll use that with a um, just a drill attached to a drill hopefully I can get the two on the outside are easy the one on the inside uh, is a little bit more difficult it's on the inside near the top so that's the procedure to remove the accelerator pedal okay I don't know if you can see but I've I pulled the red tab straight out and that gets released so we'll just set it right there for now. Okay, I wasn't able to give you a good view of my uh, removal of that accelerator pedal. It was just pretty tight. I was able to use uh, the uh, drill to remove one of the nuts and the other two I really had to do it by hand ratchets and it just was tough. Difficult to show. So again, refer to the video link at the bottom for a good view of exactly this whole process but I'll continue okay now you can get a good view of that hidden port it's uh, there's a rubber grommet in there just pop that out and your wires will go right through there okay I don't know how well you can see back there but I uh, I ran the wire through I've got a black uh, protective uh, kind of conduit that I bought at Harbor Freight that I used to protect the the lines and then as you can see you know you just uh, thread your wire loom through there now I got it coming out uh, to the front and uh, right now I'm just going to coil this up because I have plenty of, uh, of wire up here I don't know you know where I'm going to cut it or anything like that so I'm going to just kind of coil this up tape it off, put it in a safe place here, so uh, until the base plate comes in, I'll be all set on the front end. I'm gonna go back and, and finish the uh, driver's side tail light now and the final hookups of the tail lights. Before I reinstalled the accelerator pedal, you know, we removed the grommet, so we've got the wires through there, but there's a hole, and we're going through the firewall, so we don't wanna have any moisture get into um, the cabin, so, uh, I'm using, I've used this before, this is like a putty that is used when you install an electrical service around where the cable would go into your home. Uh, but, you know, any type of weatherproof putty uh, or I guess silicone or whatever would be okay to use to seal off that hole so that no moisture gets in, comes up from underneath the car and gets into the cabin. So make sure you do something like that before you reinstall the accelerator pedal we're gonna do that now and uh, we'll be done with the front all right so I finished up in the front I tidied it up reinstalled the accelerator pedal uh, I connected the terminal there so everything's all good I cleaned it up a little bit and uh, so I went to the back and I did reinstall the driver's side tail light um, in process of doing that I ran the uh, two whites uh, and uh, to the ground behind the tail light. So one from the loom and the one from, of course, the tail light. Those are now ground with a set screw, with a screw, self tapping screw, to the frame uh, behind the tail light. I then connected the, the black in the driver's side to the yellow from the loom. That's your brake and turn for the driver's side. And then I connected the brown from the passenger side with the, the driver's side. And um, so we have uh, two, two of the browns from the passenger side and from the loom going into the brown from the driver's side tail light. So there's two browns crimped on one side, one on the other side. So all the browns are connected. Those are your tail lights. So we're good to go. I checked, uh, you know, reinstalled everything, uh, tried my regular turn signals, brake lights, etc. for the Fiat. That was fine. 
So now I'm going to temporarily connect a uh, four inch round, a four round uh, plug that I got from Hopkins to the, the loom wires and try it with my motor home to make sure the wiring's all good. That's about all I can do until the base plate comes. So uh, another hot day, I uh, got a lot accomplished.